what's going on guys? Today I'm going to show you my Vibe Kayak Skipjack 90. I'm going to show you why I chose a, such a small kayak, all the out of the box features, all the modifications I made to it, and eventually answering the question, is it the best small fishing kayak? We'll see. I chose such a small kayak because I live in an apartment. Very limited storage space. I have a flight of steps to go up and down. Um, also, I have a small car, so loading and unloading a kayak easily is, uh, was very important for me. Um, the Vibe Skipjack is 9 feet long, 46 pounds. I wouldn't say it's the easiest to carry it up and down the stairs by myself, but it's definitely a lot easier than most fishing kayaks out there, um, which you know could be over 100 pounds. Yeah, let's start with the out of box features. Over here, we got a carry handle. We got one in the back as well. We got ones on the sides, which uh, is the ones I use. Uh, I, when I carry it up and down the stairs, I kind of carry it in a suitcase. Um, we got storage hatches up here, and up here. Over here is where I keep the battery for my fish finder. But these storage hatches are pretty cool. They keep water out. They only keep water out when they're closed. Um, when you open them, and if, if you have uh, any water resting on top of it, that's when water can get in, so you gotta be careful with that. Um, over here, the one closest to the seat right in front of me, I keep all the stuff that I need immediate access to. So I keep a small tackle box in there with you know any hooks, my favorite lures, weights, whatnot. Here we got two scupper holes, two here, two under the seat, and two in the back. You know, it keeps water coming in, or uh, it keeps water from collecting inside your boat. They also give you scupper plugs for it, so you could plug them up if you choose to. I guess the only um, time I'd use them is if I'm in the lake and I'll just keep water completely out, but out in the ocean. I prefer to leave them out because you know, it's inevitable. Water is going to get in, and I want it to get out, so I don't want to be scooping water out as it collects inside. Over here, you got this little storage well. Um, you know, you can keep hooks or you know whatever you want in there. But um, I drilled a hole in there uh, to give access to the the power cords and the transducer cable for my fish finder. You got a cup holder here. And over here, you got this little indentation with built-in screw holes for a, that a, a Scotty mount fits perfectly into. Um, you know, if you put the Scotty mount on there, you put a rod holder. Me, I put a tran or I put a fish finder mount on there, so it worked out perfectly. Over here, you got the paddle that it comes with. Um, yeah, the paddle is fine. I didn't I didn't upgrade or anything. It worked perfectly fine for my purposes. You got this little bungee cord over here to secure the paddle. You got one on this side as well. I also use this bungee cord to secure my fishing rods for whenever I do surf launches. So in the case that the boat tips over during a surf launch, all my equipment is secure. Here, you got the seat. Now, the stock seat, the, the seat that it comes with, I wasn't too happy with. Look how thin it is right here. Seven, eight hours, your tushy's gonna start to hurt. But it's what come, came with it. And uh, also, it eventually starts sliding, like the, the straps eventually got sliding, so you're spending a lot of time just readjusting your seat. And um, it gets kinda annoying. In any case, let's take this. Let's put this down so you can see the back. You got the four rod holders built in. And they have these little uh, caps in here. Got two back here, two in front. I love these uh, rod holders because they're they're angled, so you could leave a rod in there and actually have line out in the water while you're throwing a lure with another rod. You could also troll with it because it's angled, so it keeps your line away from the boat. I usually troll with the ones in the back over here. And you can see the, the rod is angled away. So that's pretty cool. 
I didn't see a need to add an extra rod holder because four is more than enough. Usually I only bring like three setups up there, so. Over here in the back, you got these indentations for a outrigger and also screw holes for the outrigger. So if you wanted to make the boat a little more stable, you have the option to do so. Um, I personally didn't because you know, even though I'm on the ocean, uh, it's, it's been fine. The stability of the boat's been fine. I, you know, you can't stand in it, but um, I don't see a need to stand in it. And over here in the tank well, this is where I keep my dry bag. Um, my dry bag usually just has more tackle, maybe a sweater, uh, any other extra equipment you might need. But there's a lot of space back here. I used to put a live well back here, but I stopped using the live well because it was just way too heavy. Right over here on the back, you got a drainage plug. You can unscrew, and uh, at the end of the trip, tip your boat all the way up uh, to the vertical position, and all the water that got into the boat will drain out. Also, here on the sides are these D rings. It comes with four over here and six in the back. Actually, four D rings and these little circular ones to keep the cargo net to keep things secure. But uh, yeah, uh, these are used for uh, securing the seat. And also these up here are to secure any equipment. So you always want to secure your, your rods, you want to secure anything that might fall out of the water. Over here are the, the foot braces that are kind of molded into the kayak. And um, I'm not too crazy about them. They're a little thin or shallow, however you want to call it, to keep your foot on, especially if you're barefoot, but uh, they're there. So, yeah, I mean, out of the box, this uh, boat is ready to fish. You know, you don't, you don't need much besides your fishing rods and your life vest. Yeah, after that, you're ready to go. So, that's one of the things I love about this kayak. Now, those were all the standard features. And here's all my mods. Let's get started. The first mod, probably my favorite, not really a mod, but I'd say it's an upgrade, is the Feel Free King Fisher seat. As I said, the seat that comes with the kayak is very flimsy, very thin. The Feel Free King Fisher seat is a lot more sturdy. There's a lot more cushion. Um, it doesn't slip when uh, the, the straps don't slip when I'm riding. Um, my favorite thing about it is the elevated seat not only does it give me more cushion but since it's elevated a little and you know it's not that much but it gives you a much more comfortable ride like I said eight hours on this thing you want it to be as comfortable as possible um, this little elevation kind of gives you the it's kind of like the difference between sitting directly on a, a road versus sitting on a curb so your legs are a little elevated and also if you're riding with, um, without the uh, scupper plugs, the elevated seat keeps your butt out of the water. So this thing's awesome. Now this is the Yak Power power panel and you can essentially hook up five different devices to it. Right now I only have my fish finder hooked up to it, but uh, it's great. It's small, has a small footprint and it's waterproof. And on my first kayak guy, Bought this uh, power panel that you know it was rather large. Um, it was more DIY than it was you know out of the box. And salt water eventually crept into it and eventually corroded and stopped working. It just became a mess. Um, I had to put uh, like a a large hole in my kayak just to fit that power panel in there. But this Yang Power, a little more pricier, but um, you know the, the quality of it is great. Now the power panel is hooked up to the battery, which like I said before, I keep in my front hatch. You got the battery right here. It's hooked up. And inside is where all my cables are. You can see that I use 
uh, to keep my cables organized, I used these quick clips right here. And I just found them at Home Depot, but what's cool about it is it has this adhesive backing that you could put inside uh, the hull and keep all your cables organized. But yeah, I keep my battery in here. So, um, like I said before, the hatch is you know waterproof. It keeps water out unless you open it. So because I have my battery in here, I never open this hatch when I'm out in the water. Now another add-on or modification I did was the, the fish finder. I do a lot of fishing offshore, so without a fish finder, I'm relatively flying blind. Um, you know, I have I have no idea what structures underneath me. I have uh, no idea if there's fish underneath me. But over here, I got the Lorance hook reveal, and I got it secured to the Scotty Scotty Universal Transducer mount which fits into the Scotty mount, which of course, as I said earlier, the, the five skipjack has already has a place for it, the Scotty mount. So it works out perfectly. Over here, I got the transducer cable and the power cable. The power cable is running to the battery. Actually, the power cable runs to the power panel, which runs to the battery. Now, the transducer, some people put their transducer outside of their kayak, and for that, you need some more equipment. You need a, a transducer mount that sticks on the side of the kayak. But the beauty about having a kayak is that it's plastic, and the transducer doesn't need to go outside of the kayak. You don't need a transducer mount. You could actually put it inside the kayak. And inside the kayak, it's secured by duck seal. Duck seal is, you know, this cheap putty that you can get at Home Depot or any hardware store or on Amazon, but it's pliable. It doesn't harden and it's sticky, so it secures the transistor very well in, in the inside the hull. The sonar waves goes right through the plastic hull, so you don't see any performance issues or, uh, you know, on the fish finder, everything looks perfect. Let me show you what it looks like inside the hull. So I just used, you know, a little bit. Well, maybe not a little bit of a duck seal, but I kind of made a made a tube, wrapped it around the transducer, and pushed it all in, and it's perfectly fine. It even survives like uh, the trip up to wherever you're fishing. Another upgrade or modification that I did was I got this kayak cooler bag. Usually when I catch fish, I keep it on a stringer or a game clip and I put it on the side of the boat. And, you know, it's in the water, you know, keeps the fish nice and fresh, I guess. But the problem with that is if you're having a good day and you have a lot of fish on, it causes a lot of drag. With a small kayak, you can't afford that much drag. The boat starts drifting left or drifting right, depending on which side of the boat you have it. It's just really annoying. This kayak cooler bag. I had to get some uh, of these D rings from Amazon, and I screwed them on there. Also got these clips, and just attach them like that. It's secure. Now you got some place to keep the fish that you catch. Um, toss a couple ice packs in there and keep your drinks cold, your sandwiches fresh. It's a, it's a great solution. Keeps everything streamlined. Now, I used to use a live well with my kayak and this is something that, you know, I did a little DIY and I made it and it worked awesome. Uh, the problem is that when it filled up with water, it just was too much weight and it caused my kayak to go even slower. And you know with small kayaks, um, speed is uh, an issue. So I got rid of the live well, 
Plus, I don't even uh, fish with live bait that much, you know, but I got rid of the live well and I got this torpedo bait bucket. And, um, you know, I secure this with a rope and I drag it uh, in the water. And the aerodynamic design causes, doesn't cause that much uh, drag. Uh, whenever I use it, I don't notice that much drag. But you keep the fish in here, any of your bait, any small sardines or mackerel, and it's a good solution. Well, that's it guys. Those are all the modifications I did to the kayak. I got the cooler bag, I got the fish finder, I got the control panel, the batteries in there, transistors at the hull, I upgraded the seat, and yeah, you know, I've been fishing with this thing for one, two years besides the seat, and I got everything I need with any small kayak, or actually with any kayak. You should only get equipment that you need and let the need present itself because you could sit at home and think like, oh, I need this, I need a trolling motor, I need, uh, you know, but, you know, half of, to be honest, half of the things that I buy for fishing, I don't even use. It's because I'm, I'm sitting at home and not fishing and, you know, I think I need this, I think I need that. So let the need present, present itself with smaller kayaks. Safety. With any kayaks, safety is uh, utmost important. Make sure that before you go out, you check the weather reports. So I fish mostly in the, the ocean, so I always check the surfing reports before I go out. I never go out when wind is reported to be more than 50 miles per hour, or if it's uh, you know only calm in the morning, I make sure to get out of there before afternoon hits. I'm always wearing my safety vest, or PFD as they call it. Um, you know, I got one that's, you know, a little higher end, but it, it works, you know, it's, uh, it's lightweight, it's less constricting, has a lot of pockets, but in the end, all that's important is it will keep you afloat. Also, I always have my BHF radio on there, so you have full access to the Coast Guard should you go overboard or something wrong happen, you quickly call for help. Now, is this the best small fishing kayak for me? Yes, I mean, out of the box, you know, you got your rod holders, you got your storage space, you got the seat, you got the paddle, um, you're ready to fish, you know, minus the, the rods or any tackle that you need. Um, that's all you gotta really add. Um, go ahead and add a fish finder, add a cooler bag or what have you. Uh, you know, just a couple small modifications and you're ready to fish with the best of them. Let me know if you guys have any questions, comments, suggestions to make the boat even better. Um, you know, we're going to be releasing videos where I'm actually fishing in this thing, putting all this equipment to use. But yeah, please subscribe. Please like if uh, you like what you see or don't like. But you know, me and my brother want to continue making videos and um, your support is greatly appreciated. All right. Thanks, guys.